I usually start out these country auctions that we have and local auctions with, with stoneware because I, I kind of gravitate towards it myself. And uh, we have a big bluebird on the first one from New York, number one. And um, that's the New York Stoneware Company. And we have some others from that. We have White's Utica. I found that interesting because we have two White's Utica with a, uh, a jug and a crock. And they both have this similar decoration. Further on, uh, we have number eight is a really, really nice redware pot. I really, really like redware. I always have, and that's a nice pot. This stoneware is very interesting, even though it's not decorated. It definitely has a, an interesting label. And it's a Henry Slade from Boston who, who sold McAvoy snuff. So this was full of snuff. It's got the ship on it that probably it came in. Speaking of ships, we have a <clears throat> number of prints right now. And this is a, a whaling, sperm, sperm whaling uh, with its varieties. And you can see the the whales being uh, attacked by the Nantucket sailors and um, <clears throat> New Bedford sailors. And speaking of Nantucket, we have a Nantucket basket that came from a house in Marshfield, Mass. Um, it's number 11. Onward, uh, we've got some nice, more nice redware, some, some firkins, these uh, pantry boxes, one in green, one in red. Uh, we've got a nice collection of quilts. Uh, this is, I think, a really special one. Uh, but we've got some Amish ones, too, that are going to be seen. Another favorite of mine is this group of uh, little Windsor toys. Uh, uh, a, a fellow who made Windsor chairs uh, probably in the early 1900s, 1950s. It's hard to say, but they're all hand-carved. Speaking of toys, uh, we have some Hingham uh, little toys that came from a, a really nice uh, family from Hingham. And this one is signed uh, Cotton Hersey. I don't know if you can see that, but that's a very interesting little little box. It's signed in pencil, and it also has his initials on the bottom. And that's a miniature firkin. And these uh, t uh, Hingham had a lot of toy makers as well as uh, um, box makers. This is another little cotton Hersey piece, signed on the bottom, CH, a little tub. And three little matching uh, stacking pieces that I really thought were clever. Uh, they weren't signed, but they're from the same family out of Hingham. And in this case, there are some interesting pieces. This, this is a very interesting, uh, came from the same, same family, uh, uh, a former Hingham lady. A uh, very nice family, and she uh, uh, consigned this. <clears throat> it's a coupling made uh, from a uh, a button <clears throat> with a Massachusetts seal on it. And what's very interesting, and this might be very hard to get on the camera, but this is his name. I don't know if you can see that, but it says Daniel Webster. So these either belong to Daniel or he had some made for friends of his and uh, signed them but that that's from that same family daniel webster cufflinks um get some early prints in this sale that are really neat um this 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 chair is uh, because i started with country furniture back in the 1970s i i really gravitate towards uh, real wonderful country pieces and this one is just special it's in the original old, it's green paint. It looks almost black from the wear. It's got the full history on the bottom and, um, and who owned it. And <clears throat> it was made in, I believe, 1804. <clears throat> really, uh, absolutely, just as it came from the home, out of the house. And, and these two samplers were made by her uh, were made by the girl who sat in that chair in 1804. So those are pretty cool, as you can see. Uh, those are number 19. And onward, we get to another family that's a lot of fun, is the um, uh, uh, 
Gideon Wells uh, group of pieces that came from uh, the Hartford area in Connecticut. We went over there and found some things in an attic. And a lot of these things, this is a group of photographs that were uh, owned by Gideon Wells, and there's his signature. Gideon Wells was the um, naval uh, officer who became uh, Lincoln's secretary of the Navy, Abraham Lincoln. And uh, that, that kind of history always uh, is so, so uh, much fun to, to know. These uh, gentlemen were at the U.S. Naval Academy, some of the first uh, graduates. And there's another photograph of the graduates. This is Thomas Wells, Gideon's son. <clears throat> and I believe these over here came out of a trunk. All of this material came out of a small trunk that's right behind you, Ty, right here. As you can see, it had Gideon, Gideon's um, initials on top, and uh, really a nice old trunk right out of the attic. All of these pieces were in it. They're all Civil War. They're all part of uh, Gideon Wells and Thomas Wells. These, I believe, were Thomas Wells as a small child. And these are uh, uh, purses, wallets that they had. There's the U.S. and uh, nice belts. All Gideon Wells and Thomas Wells. Um, this is a photograph of Gideon, or not a photograph, but a, uh, an engraving of Gideon Wells. He was called uh, Father Neptune by the group that knew him. This is uh, some of his storage boxes. Uh, strong, actually, those were uh, at the bank, Gideon Wells, Hartford, and more um, prints from New Bedford and the whaling era, um, 1830s, 40s. Over here we have some other interesting items, uh, Chinese export tea caddies. That's a very fine example. And those are being sold together at item number 52, along with some history. We have a, an interesting print here of, um, this is Jonathan Belcher. Uh, this is seven, this is dated, I believe, 1740, as I recall, is that about that period. And um, he was the governor uh, of Massachusetts and uh, Belchertown in Massachusetts was named for him. And, and speaking of portraits, this is Tallulah Bankhead. And uh, this came from the same family in Connecticut, uh, the Wells uh, re relations. And these are really neat. Uh, I was... Uh, a theater person myself at one point, and so I really gravitated towards these. These are um, uh, from the 17th century. They're beautiful. There's a set of six of these being sold at one lot. It's number 51. To go back a little bit, and for folk art, I think this is a quite a wonderful rug, uh, hooked rug with the horse and. Uh, what's really interesting about it is that it, it um, has the uh, directionals, uh, so, uh, north, south, east, and west. Um, uh, it's a nice rug and it's, it's ready to hunt, be hanging. It's been framed. Um, another print of Boston Harbor and uh, that could use a cleaning. Uh, I had some of these were cleaned, and, and they, they uh, show really, this can be cleaned very successfully. But that, that, uh, that's a very beautiful print of Boston Harbor. Um, onward into some beautiful uh, uh, export and uh, English china porcelains. For, for, for me, one of my favorites was this box of everything in the sale and the reason being that the carpenter who made this a special carpenter no doubt who could match the grains 
And these are not veneers, this is all cut from one, one piece. And he matched all the grains from, from the top to the bottom. And as you go around, you'll see it. It's amazing uh, work. That, that, you know, uh, very difficult to do that type of work, to make sure that when you cut it, it all, it all flows together. It's exciting to see that type of work. And also this little escutcheon plate, which is made out of bone. Uh, that to me is one of my favorites. Um, and these are the quilts. Uh, these are Amish. Uh, they're crib quilts. The Amish uh, were very great quilters, um, and still are. They still do quilting. But these are these got some age to these, and uh, probably you know mid 20th for this one. And there's one down there I think is probably from the 30s. But they're a beautiful group of uh, quilts. Some more stoneware that came in from another consigner. This is an especially good one. Um, you don't find many of these. Uh, these are uh, what they call incised because it's cut right into the clay and then colored over. Uh, so that that's a, a really pretty piece. That's 137. We we added that in later, so it's 137A. And I like these. These are just nice. This is some nice. Uh, uh, very unusual uh, fireplace spatulas and the fork with the uh, spatula. That's a nice lot. And this with the uh, trivet. And I've never seen this before. I've seen a lot of these. Um, uh, these are can this is a candle snuff, so that when you at night you'd want to trim that candle. But I've never seen a holder like that. That's great. So, and over here we get into some modernist material, uh, mid-century. This is uh, Miro. This one's signed in pencil down here, Miro. And um, these are, uh, this came from a, uh, an exhibit of his. This is, uh, that's a poster and these are uh, programs. There are two of these, Miro. Uh, Calder, this is a fairly uh, nice uh, print uh, balloons and these I thought were really interesting these came from a state in uh, Marshfield um, and then over here we have some fairly contemporary folk art this fellow is uh, uh, his name is a Corsi uh, he did that in 04 and there are a couple of these I thought those were really great he does really nice, um, I love the little bird on top of, the, of his horn. Then we've got um, oh, some face jugs that are just really grotesque. Um, um, I don't know how this worked or if it did. That's a double uh, spout teapot. Uh, strange, strange, strange. So we've got a little bit of everything in this sale. And then over here, we've got bottles, more, more uh, stoneware, some very nice wines came from a collection in uh, Connecticut. And the quilts, this is a quite an early quilt. Um, has a little wear here and there, but uh, it's beautifully quilted on the back, as you can see, Amish. I've always loved the Amish quilts. Great colors. Uh, and here we have a selection of silver that's come from different consigners. And uh, for historical, uh, this one is really quite something. This is a ring. I'll take it out of its case. The case was made for it. This is a, this is a ring that uh, is a signet ring, as you can see. I don't know if you can see that. I'll try to get that for you. Um, this is Oliver Hazard Perry's ring, and uh, there's a history to it here, given to the Commodore by his mother, in Taglia, and it's uh, definitely a lady's ring, but uh, it was used as uh, his signet so that he could seal his uh, uh, envelopes. This is, uh, not, and I've got the history of it here from Barbara M. Perry, who was his, um, uh, uh, I think his eldest grandson, anyway. That's how it came down. 
that's a really pretty piece and historically significant some really great silver I really uh, like this uh, signed Philadelphia sugar bowl at the time if you had sugar in that quantity you were, had to be fairly well to do this is signed and underneath as you can see coin silver And these are quite nice uh, with the uh, these 113 on two. Uh, these are also signed right here. I don't know if you can see them. They were from the very famous makers from England, and uh, both with gilt uh, um, interiors. And I was told uh, that they would gild the interiors on silver like this because of uh, the taste. Uh, sterling is a little, you get a metallic taste, but with the gold, it, it, it buffers that taste evidently. So I just, I learned that yesterday. I wondered about that. So, uh, really nice paintings. Some of the art and the sale is really nice. This is Wilbur uh, Dean Hamilton, and this is probably Milton. Massachusetts where he painted quite a bit springtime uh, blossoms that's a nice picture we have some uh, folk art um, these are these are called mill weights and um, they were used for the uh, to weight down uh, the uh, windmills um, we've got some nice weather beans too this is a terrific running fox weather bean gilded <clears throat> this bear is a lot of fun. Speaking of tiger maple, like that box, this is a tiger maple table that's from the 18th century Queen Anne. Beautiful uh, matched, they call that match stick, where they match the grains right up. Cut the board, flipped it, matched the grains. That That's terrific cabinet work. It's probably Rhode Island. <laughs> This is, um, speaking of weather vanes, this is one of my favorite weather vanes that I've ever actually handled. Uh, it's just a fabulous rooster, three-dimensional uh, body. <clears throat> As you can see, uh, the gilding is just terrific. And it's got the directionals, it's got the ball, it's got everything. And um, it could be put on a pretty significant barn. I'm sure it came off of one came from a collector in Connecticut. It's a great, great weather band. So we're fairly, uh, speaking of the collector in Connecticut, these two Windsor chairs are spectacular examples of uh, form. Uh, they're braced back 18th century Windsors <coughs> um, found in Connecticut um, in a nice old green. <coughs> Along from, from another collector in Connecticut, uh, the, um, the Gideon Wells family came this tea table. Uh, Queen Anne tea table, an old black finish. And I think it had an old red underneath, as you can see. Um, you know, sometimes these would be Victorianized and, or a little 1830s they put on a, on a oh, that's an 18th century table. This is a 17th century candlestick. That's a terrific, uh, goes well with it, I thought. And in the background, you'll see some Chinese pieces that came from the Spinney um, collection. From um, There's been some interest in these, especially this piece. Now, people seem to really like that. We may have misjudged it. Um, there's been a lot of interest in it. Uh, people have, uh, from China even. But uh, these pieces here, that, and these over here came from that collection, uh, <clears throat> as did some of these pieces, which were from Salem. Uh, Philip Little uh, was a, a fairly well-known artist in Salem, and, and some of these pieces are from his hand. Um, folk art, we've got other pieces such as this, I really like this. I really thought this was just great. This is a carved wooden anchor, and it's all hand carved. Uh, 
probably early 20th, late 19th, early 20th century. It's a nifty item. It's got the old rope, sailor rope, and uh, nicely carved. This is an actual um, swordfish sword. Um, these were done by sailors and uh, after this 154 and uh, you can see uh, right here there yeah, I don't know if you can see that but that's a, a sailor at the top of his boat about ready to uh, uh, throw a harpoon into a swordfish and we have other nautical things this came out of a great house in Hingham uh, it's a whale boat and the sails are all hand carved wood and and they're they're bunched up as if it looks like they were actual sails and somebody carved a funny little whale to go with it cute that's very cute like that one needs a little bit of restringing but not much so This is a, a painting that I really gravitated towards. This is uh, it's item number 60, and um, it's uh, Lake George, and it's from the Sabbath Day Point um, in, uh, on, on Lake George. It's got folks out in boats and enjoying the sunset. Um, that's item number 60, and that's by a Frenchman, uh, de Grailly, I believe his name is. Oh, that's a terrific picture. Yeah, Victor de Grailly. He did. He when I learned that he uh, took prints uh, from America <coughs> and then copied them and then sold these to Americans going back to uh, uh, from France. <coughs> so this is a, a a really nice painting by Philip Little. And this is a clam digging in Salem uh, with the Salem Harbor in the background. <clears throat> nice impressionist piece and original frame and, and never been cleaned. It's just as it found. And um, I've done clam digging, not in Salem, in Duxbury actually. And it's not easy to bend over like that for that length of time. I had a lot of fun doing it. <clears throat> in Nautical, this is a an unusual item. This is uh, for pulling teeth on <laughs> board ship. And this this is a rolling pin <clears throat> made with whalebone ends. Sailor made. So, all right, we've done that section. You could go over if you want to keep going. We've got some really nice uh, decoys that came out of pan over a little collection. <clears throat> um, from uh, Hanover, and I'm selling them in, in, in groups of three and four. Uh, I like these. These were done and carved, and that's on a carved, it looks like a clamshell, and actually some of them are on clamshells. This one is on a clamshell. He fashioned a clamshell, drilled it, and this one's on a clamshell. So that was used to promote these pieces. <clears throat> this is a quail. It's kind of unusual. This one. This one's Alfred Gardner uh, Accord Mass. That's in the Hingham area. Accord Pond. Um, <clears throat> and I believe this one is as well. I think this was Gardner. Yeah, Alfred B. Gardner, Acord Mass. I think Joe Lincoln carved over that way too. We've got some nice prints. Uh, this is a good watercolor nap. Watercolor. Bronze uh, lamp with uh, uh, geese coming in. <laughs> over here, I thought this was pretty neat. This is a trunk. Um, Really nice condition. On top is a um, impressed, uh, probably carved into the leather of George Washington on horseback. It's all signed on the sides. It's got decoration all the way around it. Um, the interior is very nice too, as I recall. 
Oh yeah. This is probably around 1820s, 30s. Um, this is a, a pouch, a leather pouch uh, for probably letters, letters or a Bible. Or, and then also this opens up so that you could store more inside. This is old, old uh, cloth wallpaper. That's a neat piece of Americana. It's got the key too, which is nice. So we're set up in different rooms here. Another really nice weather vane, copper, with old green patina, <coughs> trotting horse. Those are kind of rare. I haven't had many of those. Um, great maps, some maps of New York. This is a good map of, of uh, New York and uh, shows a bit of uh, Long Island. And uh, here's New Jersey, Connecticut. Um, that's kind of neat. Boston, a plant of Boston, and Charlestown and Cambridge. And here's one of Hingham. Fairly uh, nice map from the area here. We're not too far from Hingham. Uh, Plymouth County. Uh, we've got uh, some pretty early maps. This one I think is uh, goes back to the 18th century, maybe even earlier. Yeah, that's a, it's Poland, actually, Silesia, they called this back then. There's another one. Uh, knife box that came out of Hingham. And then we get into some ethnographic material as well. This is a pretty mixed bag auction. They've got a little bit of everything. These are uh, molas. Uh, from uh, an island, San Blas Indians, Panama. They're a matched pair of We're reselling this for a client. Uh, it is, uh, it's a uh, killer whale with two seals. It's northwest coast and uh, probably at, at a uh, uh, potlatch. That's a nice piece. It's got beautiful uh, buttons, all done in buttons. And then for Indian, um, we've got the Crumbo piece here. He's a very famous printmaker and artist, and uh, that's a beautiful uh, horse. It's got a little bit of water damage, as you can see, but it's mostly in the framing or in the border. Some New Guinea pieces. Um, it's a nice old shield here for a house board, and uh, and then it goes on uh, more folk art. And this is a good desk. This came out of a house down on the, down near uh, south of Taunton. That's a very early desk, and it's a nice interior. With, uh, good good drawers, a lot of space. Stand up. You could put a small computer up here. Another quilt. Um, this came out of a house in Sichuan. Very early house. That was a Lincoln house, actually. And that was a nice cupboard. Old refinish. Nice. High safe. I haven't had one of these for years. I'm from Ohio originally, so we used to get quite a few pie safes back in the early 70s and bring them out to Massachusetts from Ohio. They would sell very quickly at $75 to $100. This one has nice uh, whirling uh, tins to it, 209. The green, I think, is a later color, but uh, it's got some age to it. The, um, this is a funny piece. This, this, all of these cards, decks of cards, were in the uh, what, what's called the till. Let me just open it up. These were all found in the till. <laughs> I mentioned it in, in the advertising. And somebody said, oh, do you mind taking a picture of the, of the cards? This is the till. Oh, and there's still some cards left in there. And they were all in the till when we got it. And all of these. And somebody said, oh, uh, I, I, I like the cards. <laughs> We've got some really nice albums. Let me show you one of these albums. I don't know if this one's it. But this is the way they used to store photographs back in the Victorian period. Look at the gold on the... Uh, 
on the on the edges. But um, that's that's all tin types. There's a whole family uh, fellow in a naval hat, and uh, back here a couple of guys in uh, uh, the uh, hats. I love their hats. Ah, terrific dresses and things. Mary Cutter, Mary Cutter Mudge, Mary Cutter Mudge, Eugene Edgar Thompson, Olive Stum, and uh, but let's see, one of these has some interesting ones in it, let me show you, this is it, Frank Fields, there's um, the fellow who had the cufflinks, Daniel Webster about that. There he is. He got his picture out everywhere. He was the most publicized guy. And it turns up a lot here in Marshfield or this area because he had a home here. Um, Aunt May's brother, Cyrus Toll. Toll could have been a silver family. But we got into some Civil War pictures here. And one here in this uniform. And then there's, there's a Tilden. That's a very uh, popular name. There's Grant. Alyssa says Grant. His picture got out in quite a few different albums of this, if you were lucky to get one. And um, anyway, all of these photographs will be sold together. Some nice cases. This is a daguerreotype, of course. You can tell it's got a mirrored back. And um, anyway, that's a nice lot. Um, this came out of the same house in uh, Sidgwick. Uh, it was a Lincoln house. Um, all of these, and here's a Lincoln uh, uh, print uh, signed by Timothy Cole, who was the artist, and uh, that's Lincoln without his beard. It's kind of a rare print. <clears throat> and here's a Lincoln here uh, at one of his, uh, I don't know if that's his inauguration or, or one of his uh, speeches. Okay, so um, I really like this chair, even though most people would think that it was cut down. This came out of Marshfield. I'm selling it with that table because, uh, well, because I am. They came together. That's a little uh, of 18th century um, tavern table, what they call them. And But this is number 10. And the reason I like this chair is because it's so low. And most people would say, oh, that, that's much too low. No, that chair is low because whoever sat in this chair probably tended the fires. Uh, at the uh, and that, that that's the way that got uh, they you know it even has a little singe I think on the back because they they sat pretty close to the fire as you can see down at the bottom it's got a little singe too somebody wiped their brush on it with green paint but you you had to have that fire going pretty much full time in the winter here anyway anyway a collection of uh, for people that like. Uh, Copper. This whole collection is being sold as one lot. <clears throat> Over here, we have some Chinese. Uh, then in here, you've got the, uh, some Chinese pieces, including this opium bed. Uh, they called it. So these are called dream, dream stones in the back, and that's a. I guess. That would be a nice chair that went with it. And um, this over here, I want to show you this. This is um, this is a rare uh, ephemera. This is Captain Benjamin Beale's diary, dated. He was a captain of a of a, of a company or a regiment. I'm not sure which. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but this is. Uh, March 17th, 1776. Here's July 18th, 1776. And that was Rattlesnake Hill. This was a march that he went on with his men from Cambridge all the way into New York. And um, it goes on with all of this. He went to Albany, down to New, down to New York. And um, it's, it's a complete day-by-day uh, -day or week-by-week -week, um, diary. And this, this, is, uh, this is all being sold as one lot. 
and this came from a, 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 a family uh, out of Ham. Uh, this this is a his ledger book, and this is hand printed wallpaper, as used, and it's all hand sewn, as you can see. And this is all um, different. Um, this is his ledger of what he paid his men, and this is uh, December uh, 1776. Um, and you know how how they uh, divvied up certain things, and what he had to buy for his men. Um, it's really a, a wonderful group of, of paper from, from this collection. And uh, Solomon Lincoln, who was a great historian in the latter part of the 19th and early 20th century, wrote uh, this. I've had his pieces before, and I could tell his handwriting. Benjamin Beale, born in Hingham, April 19th, 1744. And he was an officer in the War of the Revolution, died in Hingham. And then this is uh, a full transcription of uh, his journal. And uh, Solomon Lincoln transcribed the whole thing in longhand. And all of these are pay slips and so forth for his men. This one dated, I think. This one's 1776, different group. It was Mount Independence, September 8, 1776. Pretty interesting group of things. This all being sold as one lot, it's 46B. More silver, haven't got it even out of the bag yet. Um, silver. And more silver, more silver. As what you might get out of, a, out of an estate. You know, people, uh, and over here you have a really nice, great painting. Uh, this one here of, of uh, by, and it's signed down at the bottom, M. Horberg, I believe. And um, it's Forever forever Free, Abraham Lincoln. That's the, uh, that's a nice painting. In the quilt. Another quilt. This is a crazy quilt, they call these. But there's hand painting on it, too. Right here on velvet. All, as you can see, it's like bird tracks all the way around. Uh, that's pretty cool. Very nice condition for silks. Usually they're not in very good condition. Buddha. I think this might have been a parade type thing because it had bolts on the bottom. Might have been carried. So that's about it. Uh, little, little toy uh, pedal car, which uh, this turns around when you when, uh, when you pedal it. So it's cute. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Hope you can hope you can bid, or, or if you've seen some things you like or would like to know more, just give us a call.